Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is your speaking and welcome to the summary for multiplayer game number 151. As usual, spoiler alert, if you do not want to know how the game went, do not check this video and go to the first position of the playlist, the link should be somewhere in here. But if you do want to know how the game went, so you can decide if you want to watch the game or not, or you have already watched the game and want to hear me telecraft a little bit about the game, then I invite you to watch this video. Okay? So, the official introduction we have done, so let's go. So, this was played yesterday, 14th February. I've gotten this game, Mr. Baba Yeru, playing as Russia. Kiek Alex playing as Poland. Awesome Me playing as Korea. Caution playing as Arabia. And Lining Larry, Lining Larry, you should remember this name, Lining Larry, playing as Iroquois. And I rolled... Inca. Well, I had different choices, but taking into consideration that there's Arabia in the game and there's Baba in the game, I choose Inca because Inca is awesome. Also, the rules for this game is Hubble Band, Wall Fate Band, and Rationalist Band, which I actually forgot about later in the game, but it didn't really matter. We're gonna get back to that. So, this is my starting location and when you look at the starting location it looks interesting it looks interesting now <laughs> it's one of those troll starts if you're like figuring out what a troll start means it means you can't get all that you want with a troll start it's like this kind of start when you have a river, you're like, you spawn on a river and you have a mountain, two tiles of river. So if you want to get the mountain, you get off the river or you get off the coast to get a mountain. This is like, that's this kind of start when, when you're going to move somewhere, you're going to miss something. Like you can't get all of the good stuff that the starting location provides you. It's like... There, you have million of options with the starting location like this, but you can't get all the good stuff or most of the good stuff that the starting location provides you. So this is exactly what's happening with this start. Now, with so many warmonger saves uh, and actually Russian is bound, which means it's going to be war, 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 you would like to be on a hill, okay? So... The choice of a hill is, I can go to this hill, I can go to gems, like Sergei said, go to the gems already. Uh, which seems like a very reasonable idea, especially that I'm Inca, I could settle on zero, turn zero on gems and I could already be cranking out gold and additional hammer, I could be working deer, I would be on a good way to grab the wheat, I would have wine as my second luxury in the city, and so on and so forth. But also you're like Inca, so you would love to be on a mountain, especially that there's like option for a river mountain, right? Like you can go on the river here, or you can go on the river mountain here. And since you're Inca, you hope like, oh my goodness, maybe on the other side of those mountains, there's going to be a million of hills surrounded by mountains for beautiful terrace farms, because you're Inca. So that's also like an option. So a tough troll start and everybody was saying like go to the gems go to the gems go to the gems well gems seemed interesting and i kind of went to the gems but i only went there to scout i believe yeah i went there only to scout and now i'm gonna stop in here and like i'm looking at this i'm like uh no i i, I don't like the north of this i'm like okay i'll be on the gems i'm gonna have deer maybe this but Looking at the spot, I'm gonna get some sort of a desert tile, plain style that I'll probably never work. Uh, sheep in a third ring, and I'm gonna miss out like a cow that's in the third ring. I could miss out the sheep, additional luxury. Like if I'm gonna go here, I already have an option for one, two, three luxury capital, which is just great. So overall, I decided to move away on this side and have again an option. I don't want to settle on this side of the river. I wanted to have another option. Either I settle on the hill for a tree luxury capital, not on a mountain, but with an option for Machu, 
or maybe if my warrior is going to go on the other side of the mountain i could settle on the forest i know it would waste another turn mm, but if there's something good on the other side of the mountain i would just simply settle there but uh, let's keep this up a little bit there's actually nothing again a desert and literally nothing in here so i decided to settle on on the hill and i went away straight to grab some scouting information i gro grabbed a scout and i grabbed a second scout i skipped all a bit too early in here now there's a crucial very interesting part that happened in here my first druid that i found with the warrior is a spearman now spearman is bloody amazing upgrade this i i would say that this is one of the most important rng things that happened in this particular game a bloody spearman upgrade this spearman upgrade snowballed so hard in this game is beyond madness this is like the the mvp like mvp moment of the game like this guy this particular spearman is like the most valued unit in the whole goddamn game all right and though i'm not aware of it at this moment uh, like when you think about it throughout the look about all the game it's just like bloody ridiculous because this ruin upgrade hey be right back 30 seconds All right, so I was talking about that like MVP Spearman. This Spearman upgrade actually turns out like with a Spearman, you're like hoping, oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have like, uh, I'm going to find a city that I'm going to ask tribute and like, boom, it's like, huh, God damn it. First city state and it's like on a hill. Now, if it would be flatland, it would be absolutely no problem to grab tribute with a spearman and a scout, but it's not. It's on hill. This is like the worst kind of scenario, but it misses only 10. It misses only 10 to grab a tribute. And I'm like, if we could grab another scout, would two scouts and a spearman in this particular situation, it looks like nobody met the city state yet. Would it be enough to ask tribute? And it turned out it it, it was. It's turn four. I'm gonna get a spearman in three turns. So let's skip a little bit forward. And I already have I bought a warrior. I, I already bought a worker. I had a successful round of tributes on three city states with a spearman and two scouts that was ridiculous i don't remember a game when i actually was able uh that i was able to tribute city states on hills with only a s with lucky spearman upgrade most of the time like people meet the city state they also get some sort of a spearman upgrade there's some warriors around the place and like uh, you can't really get that tribute, right? I already met Araqua and I met Baba. So, looking at my capital, my capital is glorious. Yes, it's a troll capital, but it's glorious when you think about it. It has wheat, deer, so that's two grana resources, two cows. I don't see the horses yet, but there's one horse. 
four luxuries, four unique luxuries in my capital. Wine, gems, gold, and truffles. And one, two, three sheep, right? And I'm settled on iron too. It's on a river and has a very good river system for a late game, right? It has approximately one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen hydro plant hydro plant tiles. This capital is insane. Not only that, I'm like, oh my god. Honor. This is like honor. There's three beautiful city states around me. Beautiful city states. One unique luxury cocoa. This one has truffles. Theoretically, I already have that. And I don't remember about this city state in here. So, on turn 9, I already bought a worker. I had three city states tributed. I didn't grab a worker, like steal a worker, but I'm gonna steal a worker later on. But I'm like super happy and I'm saying like, oh my god, perfect, Inca, beautiful capital, four, three city-states nearby that I can utilize greatly. We're going honor, right? So at this point of the game, I'm like honor and I'm super happy. No settlers, no nothing, just another round of tributes, hopefully get the upgrades and get the city-states. I'm not in like, I want to kill somebody mood yet. Because I don't have the scouting information, but I'm definitely like honor I want to kill city states. So let's skip forward a little bit and see what's cooking around the place. All right. So it turned out. Can we like get them up? I hope I'm gonna move them up around a little bit so I can have more vision. Come on, zoom out yours. Zoom out. Alright, fine. Demographics. I'm OCCing. I'm six hammers behind. Now, Baba is doing the Baba thing, right? Baba is doing the Baba thing, and I would probably settle on. I would probably settle my settle on, like, taking the city states. And, like, Sergio was on TeamSpeak, and Sergio was saying, like, Oh my god, look, you got so many city states around, you take those city states and you're like invincible. And I'm like, mm, I don't think that's the clue. I'm like, I don't think with just city states I can compete with like Liberty Russia, played by Baba. There's no way, he's just gonna like roll over me later in the game. And I'm still gonna be in the middle of the map if I'm gonna just take city states and SimCity. Overall, uh... My honor approach, I mean, like, a lot of people choose honor and they kill city states, and they, it's like priority for them is like kill city states, right? Let's kill city states because honor is great, city states do not defend themselves, and they do have an opportunity to be a good city, right? But I feel like honor is a waste if you p pick honor just to go to kill city states. I feel like it's a little bit of a waste because. Okay, you got the city state. You got an additional city, but you miss all the early game timings that Honor is really, really strong about. And now we're we're looking at this side. I'm like, I got another 500 G. I got another wave of tributes, and I'm going straight for construction. And I already at this moment of the game, when I saw Baba City, there's Uluru South. At this moment of the game, I was like, probably, I, I, I'm not certain if I already decided what I wanted to do. Maybe I was thinking still, but I know what I did later on in the game. And I know I went straight to Baba. I mean, like, I had an option to upgrade a lot of compos. And I'm going to show you how many compos I had very, very quickly. Let's go. All right. Turn 39. Let's do a small countdown. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 compo in the making. And still 259G, alright? I mean like... Turn 39, guys. Turn 39. 40, okay. Turn 40. 12 compos, 2 spearmans, 2 scouts, 2 warriors. 
it's an overkill to kill a city state and like this army could could wipe off a player and I'm 100% certain and I know that I'm gonna go straight to Kathmandu I'm gonna kill Kathmandu and I go to Baba why do I choose Baba and for example I don't choose Iroquois because I know if that I'm gonna attack Iroquois though he probably is like super easy target I mean look at that I'm like Grand River would just fall like poof right it would like poof away because it's like a flatland city where I can step uh, step on here and just like kill it instantly but I know in my mind like I haven't played with Lightning Larry but I know what Baba is capable of and I know what Russia in good hands is capable of and like I always kind of when I when I join like when I watch Baba play most of the time it's like 90% of the games when I join his stream I look at his stream and I see exactly the same thing Liberty five seven eight cities pyramids in his capital uh like turn 89 all the infrastructure is complete nobody touches him and then he starts to be like unstoppable because the liberty empire like almost like glass cannon liberty empire is starting to kick in and they finally like people finally wake up and let's attack him but it's 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 already too late uh, and i'm like always saying that this it's like why do, do people give so much time I mean, like, he's building settlers, he's got nothing. He, if he wants to kickstart his liberty empire, he's going to build monuments, shrines, granaries, libraries in his cities. It's like at least four military units that he's going to build in his cities. Why just, like, not go there and kill him already? So this is kind of like book example of how you deal with a liberty empire if you have the opportunity because this was very lucky as i said i get so many tributes i was extremely lucky with tributes because not too many people met those city states and the people who met those city states didn't have the army so my army just snowballed it snowballed and we were just like getting tribute after a tribute after a tribute after a tribute so i got 12 compos on turn 40 and I pick off Kathmandu I believe I like pick Kathmandu in two turns yeah it's turn 43 I picked off Kathmandu and now you can have a glimpse at Baba's Empire this Empire is barely starting to kick in I check out the, the uh, I check out the view from Baba now Baba didn't scout my capital all right he didn't scout my capital for too long he sees like i'm top army he sees that but he doesn't really see that army he saw he noticed my army when i was actually taking Kathmandu, and he was like uh oh <laughs> i'm like Kathmandu, a city on a hill with walls fell in two turns he knew he's in trouble so he dropped all the sim city he dropped all the sim city and started to spam units but it was already too late because his build order was like like he got the he got uluru he didn't get pyramids but he had a choice he had a he had he had to choose between pyramids and grabbing uluru in here so he couldn't get both most probably because people go for pyramids so so often baba loves pyramids every every liberty player like loves pyramids it's just like that good but he had a choice, go for a, for Uluru or grab pyramids. And he chose to grab Uluru, so it was his first settlement. Then he started to settle the spots. He got the shrine pantheon. He starts off build order, you know, like shrine, library, uh, not sh library, shrine, monument. And I don't even think it, he started with granary. He got some workers. He stole like one worker build, I believe. I, I don't even remember if he stole two. Never mind. But what I'm trying to say, at this point of the game, his cities were barely done with monuments. And he got like zero army, maybe like three or four units, zero army. He's got great hammers. He's got around 60 hammers. Um, he's in a golden age right now. He's going to finish Liberty very, very soon. But also he's like on a tech path. He's going for temples right now. So he's going philosophy. He doesn't have... Uh, wheel he doesn't have engineering he doesn't have compost 
he's starting to spam archers all right with 60 hammers that's true so his cities are like one two turning archers and all the other military especially his capital three pop but like I, I believe it had like 15 or 20 hammers with three pop because it's russia so he turns all his economy into war mode right now but he's gonna face off with like 12 compos and a couple of small units and in the back of this i'm actually like thinking uh okay we need terracotta army because baba may want to get terracotta and instead of building more troops i'll just grab terracotta because it's going to provide him with a spearman compo uh scout and i will buy something also too so I'm like six turns of terracotta and the funny part is like baba also thought about terracotta he got an engineer for terracotta but it went off like three turns before he could engineer terracotta with his liberty finisher so actually like terracotta was a very very good choice that uh, I, I, I really like that I made that choice that we went for Terracotta. So it's turn 43. And this land is really hard to access, to attack into. Let's go a little bit more. Oh, reload. Oh, again, capital. Okay, this land is pretty hard to access into because I am Inca, that's true, but I need to cross the river. And it took some time. I, I took some losses. I'm going to be 100% fair. Even though it's like I have a super crazy military advantage over him right now. And he has like zero units. Very like popping out archers in his cities. Uh, to cross the river, I took some losses. I just needed to took, took the losses to get all those 15 units on the other side of the river. When I finally got there, it started to go quickly. It's 10.48. We got St. Petersburg. We're gonna get to Yaroslav soon. Ah, uh, second. So I got St. Petersburg. I'm slowly working on Yaroslav. Char War chariots are, well, chariot archers are starting to kick in in here. But I finally got my army on the other side. And I know I don't have too much time. I need to... Like, for a second there, I thought, like... Maybe, just maybe, I don't really have to produce troops out of this. But I know that, like, Baba switched all his... Uh, all, all his economy into military. And if I'm not gonna, like, reinforce this... I have less hammers than Baba, though. And if I'm not gonna reinforce it, my... Attack's gonna stop at some point because I'm gonna run out of units, right? So I need to do this like I need to get this attack done quickly and effectively. So I'm just pumping out troops. I got that terracotta army, right? And I'm just pumping like chariot archer, chariot archer, chariot archer. I annexed the Kathmandu and after Kortha has also started to produce units there. Uh, so eventually eventually I had some problems crossing another river like those defensive spots are crazy i don't know if baba was settling the cities in mind of like super defense but st petersburg one tile of river yaroslav one tile of river on my side rostov one tile of river you can't physically like get there even because it's behind a river you need to cross river so this defensive spot is very very good and though i had like double maybe triple of his army when i started to well when i was at this stage of the game just like the land was very very hard to access to without like engineering and actually engineering stuff hey cuba hey man but finally i broke this uh finally broke this of course with several losses because i need to get this done quickly before he could get like a critical mass of troops that would like hold me off in here I just need to flood this away. So uh, another reload and another reload, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, he's just lucky, Kuba. Yeah, probably he was just lucky. Well, I don't think in Baba mind, at least from what I've seen, he never thought that like, I'm gonna go to him. He didn't know my capital, but like I thought that I'm gonna go through a city state right on top of him didn't occur in his mind like, until three turns before I actually got there, you know, when he saw that I'm coming for him. 
that mind that, that thought didn't cross his mind in here so i finally broke rostov uh i finally broke rostov he retook it once then i took it away but overall i got his capital in turn what turn 64 5 turn 66 yeah around turn 66 65 66 so it took 23 turns to go through whole baba empire right it's quite long it's quite long but when i reached the critical mass actually after i took this city here after i took this city in here i kind of know that i can slowly start working on my economy now on the other side of things, what's happening in this game, uh, Iroquois. Okay, I'm naming Iroquois. Iroquois sees what's cooking, right? But he does nothing. He doesn't help Baba. He doesn't backstab me. He just sits there and do nothing. Caution, who theoretically also is my neighbor, also does nothing. He just sits there and seems sitting. He's got cor well. I understand caution because he had Korea there next to him and he kinda he was on team speak and he said to me like okay if we're not gonna have problems I wanna camel Arabia uh, I wanna camel Korea <coughs> I'm sorry I wanna camel Korea so you don't really have to worry about me and so I'm okay that's fine with me I just wanna kill Baba and then I wanna kill Iroquois and you can like go kill whatever you want if we can have peace so caution wanted this agreement to happen and it was perfect for me but then we've got situation of korea he wasn't at war with korea yet i believe red hat title uh but what about iroquois now iroquois it makes little to no sense to not react i mean like i'm i per i feel perfectly fine with him not reacting when i started a war with baba because you want the stronger players to like baba was in the okay we've got poland there but baba had russia he settled a million of cities he had a good culture religion uh baba was set up for such a strong position at, at around turn 80 100 it's bloody crazy right now, Iroquois somehow managed to get seven cities himself, but I don't know what was he thinking exactly, but I kind of understand that he didn't want to interrupt my war against Baba because he didn't want Baba to be in a strong position. I'm like, it's logical that he wanted to Baba to bleed a little bit and like maybe not die completely, but probably when like Baba's capital would be threatened, he should prepare a timed attack there and like go straight through my supply lines, right? I mean like he should just like go boom and like cut my empire in half and liberate the city states, cut off my capital, no army at the capital, there's like no army at my capital and not that many hammers there. So my army is here with the Baba Empire, he frees a city state and he can like do whatever he wants he can take over baba's empire and like keep the keep my capital as a desert if he can protect the city state because there's no army there he just needs to pick off the rest which is there so i can't reinforce he's a city state ally and he's in a good position but he never done that i'll clear out baba and my army was free not only I, it was free to defend myself from iroquois but i had no other threats arabia deal no problem poland settle theoretically on top of my capital but away from my capital and showed no signs of aggression so i got an empire on turn 66 instead of building up settlers i got seven city empire out of baba called house cities this is the most perfect scenario for honor you can possibly imagine you clear out a very very strong player uh, very very quickly with not that much effort and you still have a position that you can sim city after then and actually have the time to turn those captured cities to cr 
crazy card house cities all right so that's like a dream come true like one of the most craziest well like luckiest honor situation i could ever imagine right so i'm done with russia and like i've got my time to sim city and i'm like sim sitting like crazy guys so i'm just going to rewind well, somewhere in the meantime awesome attack caution before camels then caution got camels and of course the war so some, somewhat stalemated made it there but i just want to show you uh I just want to show you what's cooking so i'm sim sitting like crazy i went for crossbows because i wanted to clear out Aruqua also because i wanted that flank to be cleared 100 percent i had the happiness I'm like the courthouse cities were kicking in i got the workshops in them my capital is building probably like national college or something like that at the moment uh or it's already done anyways it's like a couple of wonders sneak in there workers economy and stuff but i do have the gold still I do have the compost and some of my cities are free to build crossbows so i kind of thought to myself like okay uh it's time to get iroqua done in here and iroqua was not prepared whatsoever his army was like wiped off in three turns i believe when i started to attack him i don't know what was he thinking exactly but at 390 he still got compost he's gonna get crossbows soon but his army was like wiped off in two three turns it's like turn 90 and then like at turn 92 93 there's no more army left like no more army all right three turns his army is gone three turns and there's no more iroqua army and like all of his cities are free so a couple of crossbows, couple of upgrades, and another empire is 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 for me. I got my universities up. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm getting my universities up soon, and like at around turn 100, turn 100, I'm in a very beautiful shape. Turn 100 here. Yeah, turn 100 very beautiful shape like this empire is top hammers top food top gold first in science 138 culture a turn uh beautiful cities universities up aesthetics almost done i think almost done aesthetics and getting another city like another capital there's notre dame in this capital it's turn 100 this is it's just like I don't have the words to describe how everything worked perfectly for honor play in this game everything worked perfectly MVP Spearman at the start city-states like a, a wave of 10 tributes I believe like there are at least 10 tributes in the game right peaceful Arabia who didn't want to get trouble passive Iroqua Baba absolutely not noticing that he's gonna get attacked. Uh, so a very successful attack on the very strong, like probably the strongest player in this lobby, especially like strongest fighter in this lobby. I have absolutely no doubt that Baba was the strongest fighter in this lobby. And Sergio was asking me like, why are you going for Baba? That makes no sense. And I'm like, it makes 100 perfect sense. I don't want his empire to be ready to go to war at his terms. I want to attack him right now on my terms. So I have an advantage over him, not like the other way around, that I'm going to be like struggling to defend against his beautiful hammer-focused Russian empire. It would make absolutely no sense. So in my mind was like, if the opportunity is very favorable for me, and it was, the best option is to take out the strongest threat right and the strongest threat around me was baba it's just simple as that and thankfully he was not expecting that so that worked into my favor i got that iroquois not prepared another empire uh korea and caution is at war so we've got poland there now poland also have seven eight cities but he missed the timing i'm like my army is here right now i'm not getting too much stuff in here but poland wakes up at turn 102 when i'm like building ironworks 
he shows up in here and he declares war. All right, I've got nothing at my capital. My capital is so, so far away. Uh, so in an act of desperation, I actually use a general on truffles and I put a scout in here to block off the night. He also had Mount Kilimanjaro promotion so he can move through mountains. And like, Sergio was asking like, why did you build Great Wall? I mean like, I, I love Great Wall because it gives me options. <laughs> because I know I'm probably gonna get team at some point and my empire is gonna be so stretched out that actually every additional defense to my cities and every additional hit point will buy me that couple of crucial turns that I need to get my army repositioned. I really love Great Wall, especially like coupled with Red Fort and Freedom defense bonuses. The cities grow to beautiful combat strength and beautiful HP. Of course it doesn't matter against rocket artillery, but get against any other things, it actually matters against like crossbows, a little bit helpful against cannons, very very helpful against like, great war bombers bombers and stealth bombers like against stealth bombers if they are not healing promoted and like siege promoted uh, a, a combat a city of combat strength 220 can wreck stealth bombers pretty much so if you're being attacked by not healing promoted or well promoted stealth bombers like actually the combat strength of your cities is a problem for stealth bombers if they don't have the correct setup so I really love Great Wall, it always adds up a little bit of defense in here. So turn 1 and 2, he's attacking and it takes me... How many turns to actually get into position? I believe like 2-3 turns, yeah. 2 turns, there's a like, glimpse of my army there. I did bought a castle in my capital, it's a crossbow timing on turn 104. So obviously there's no option, this will... When my army is going to get there, there's no option it's going to work. And of course my army gets there. And the attack is, I believe, over. Let's see the remains of that army. And the setup here. Yeah, I think they conceded in here already. So it was like a concede on turn 106. But I am army... Oh, nice, good demographics, right? So, first food... First hammers, not in the golden age. First gold, second soldiers with like smidgen behind Poland. First happiness, first literacy. Uh, so they did concede at this point of the game. It was a very clean, very lucky, and I got a very smooth honor victory very smooth on our victory now i can tori craft a little bit what could be done differently in this game on my part i think i make absolutely correct calls did caution make the correct call i think he did he has he has neighbor that he has to worry about and that's korea and it actually happened to be true because korea attacked him before camels theoretically but caution timing is camel arches it's definitely not compo war so it was definitely not like compo timing for caution so i kind of understand that he wanted to sit back a little bit and then his game plan was messed up by awesome actually attacking him earlier poland did poland had any intention to get here sooner i don't know i don't remember playing with kiekel alex but looking at his setup he had multiple cities Liberty piety, I think it was like full piety full liberty uh, Or something like that So it seemed to me that he wants to just like sit there in sim city with his uh, Glory of God religion all of that stuff So he didn't look like he wants to interfere with anything in this game So it comes down to three players Liberty 7 city Iroqua Liberty seven city russia and one city inca honor <laughs> so i could go for city states my like i could go for city states but i don't like to kill city states i tremendously don't like killing city city states i so much believe that honor is a waste when you kill city states sometimes of course you're like forced to do it you need to kill something and you don't have space to expand or you don't have an option to kill somebody without actually throwing away your game but like 
just going owner to kill city states makes absolutely no sense to me i think it's using owner wrong from my experience it's so much more beneficial to leave the city states let them be and if you want to be owner just go patronage but go and kill a player already don't fight the city states it's not beneficial it looks cool because suddenly at turn fault you're able to put up a nice composite army but if you're gonna waste that army on city states you gotta think like okay you put economy into grabbing this army and now you're killing a city state after a city state after a city state if you're not going to get another timing like crossbow timing after that then you're like throwing away your game because you're turning yourself into a bloody sim city player again and honor is not really like a sim city tree if you if you compare it to like tradition or liberty when somebody is really good and is lucky and have good land it's really hard to compete with them so you just like go there and kill a player if you can or go patronage and keep the city states alive if you can expand i really like this approach and i think it's pretty successful like treat owner like uh if you wanted to go to war with i don't know tradition or liberty you get your three expands or two expands. Instead of wasting hammers on monuments, you build barracks. You put a scout into that city and you already have more culture and hammers than liberty or the same amount of culture and hammers as liberty and gold. So you build, you do your regular sim city stuff. So you build, you know, like a barracks, granary, library, you get your NC up. Then you spam units and you go kill somebody <laughs> because you want those card house cities rolling there's nothing holding you back the more cities you get the more stuff you have you've got court house you've got happiness most probably so okay but like going into the city state seems like such a huge waste of time unless you're working on a super very well promoted army that you can get out of killing city states then that's fine, but most of the time the city states do not pose any threat at all, even at the mortal. You would need to like keep them alive and cycle units and keep them even longer alive so you can shoot cities and get those crucial promotions. That's such a huge waste of time if you go up against good players. So okay, but it's enough rant about like honor, how to use honor or not. I would say that this particular game everything work in favor of honor and actually that honor gameplay worked perfectly in this situation but as you can see on this example the example of this game all the bits like all the parts need to go into the right places for this to work all right seriously you can't get into a game with a set mind like i'm gonna go honor because i want to go honor no, somewhere in the first couple of turns, you have to get the decision that honor can actually be viable. I mean, like, because otherwise you're just going to have problems. <laughs> you're just going to have problems. Though, I did see very hard opponents that do SimCity out of honor. So it's probably a s slightly viable option, but not that great in my opinion. Anyways, that's all that I have to say about this game. It was a very cool game. I really enjoy it. Enjoy it. Uh, when I watched actually from Baba perspective, uh, I think he enjoyed that game pretty much. He was laughing so hard at this game that that, uh, that I actually put pull off such a surprise and effective attack on him that <laughs> he was laughing himself that it actually worked that well. And the rest of the game actually worked also in my favor. Decisions that other players were making worked absolutely in my favor. And at around turn 105 this empire was absolutely unstoppable anymore. It was like top food, top hammers, top happiness, top science, very well culture. And actually at the last turn of this I picked even rationals that was banned, but shh, don't tell anybody. If the game would last, I would reload. <laughs> Anyways, thank you very much for watching this recap. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. If you didn't watch the game, go watch the game. The link should be in here.
and see you next time. Best wishes. Here is out.